I wouldn't want to have because of times without Jeff Arnold. What a man of God. I love him. Welcome him right now. Let's do it unto the Lord, shall we? Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 You ready? We're ready. Okay. While you're standing, let me give you a review of what you've just been through. I took notes on everybody that I talked just about. And I'm asking the Lord about five weeks ago, eating a bagel and drinking a cup of tea. The Lord just kind of went, <laughs> said, that's for Alec. And I said, whew, okay, put that away. <laughs> Tried it at home. <laughs> I said, I could use a little encouragement tonight, Lord. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you the brilliance of God. God is so good at being God, He don't need no help. No, 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 just, just sit down, just a second, just sit down. Brother Anthony Mangan started this conference, and I just wrote notes at each one, kind of a highlight that just kind of slapped me, just to kind of give me a reassurance that what I was supposed to do, and that's why this wonderful, wonderful move of God is just kind of, I mean, I, I love the move of God, but it kind of stunned me, and I said, whoa, man, let's, let's ride the wind a while. And I said, I don't understand. You gave this to me, and you know, maybe it was just for me. I don't know. But all through this conference, Brother Anthony Mangan made a statement when he preached. He said, we're stuck in Jerusalem. Sister Mangan made a statement and said, it's time to challenge our easygoing religion. Brother Pugh said, it's time for us to come to a place of decision and break points and power and energy. Mike Williams told us a blessing God, but he said there were two and a half tribes that were satisfied just to stay at the edge. Brother Barnes stood up here and went to pray, and he said, it's time to take your faith out of park. Brother Wayne Huntley not only preached, you can't fake it, but you have to faith it, but he said nothing is impossible with God. Brother Randy Keyes got to believe to see, but... I was smiling because he was talking to Elijah to tell him to come out of the cave. And he said, get away from negative folks who will stop you from where you need to go. Brother Tenney today mesmerized us with you just one moment away from your miracle. And Brother Baker said, oh, Lord God, God is looking for a willing servant. And, and I have written on my little notes so you can see it at the service. Johnny James, it just says, mind blown. I've never heard some of those words he used. I didn't know you're supposed to do homiletics, hemiletics, hocaletics, hecaletics, all that. I'm just kind of slob doing my job. That's all I'm doing. And then that fabulous message. Wow, just my fine missionary brother, Brother Hopkins, just preached about reaching and looking out trying to feel after God and deity. And so I've, I've said all that to now introduce my subject. Would you stand with me one more time? Reading two portions of Scripture in your hearing tonight, the Gospel according to Deuteronomy, chapter 32. Well, I heard someone say Gospel means good news, so Deuteronomy is good news. And... Uh, I'd like to read verse 9, for the Lord's portion is his people, and Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and a waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. 
As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, and spreadeth abroad her wings, and taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. I want you to get this again. Verse 11. As an eagle stirreth up her nest. Okay. And I want to read one more scripture. Okay. The Gospel according to Job, chapter 29. Beginning with verse 1, Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me, when His candle shined upon my head, and when by His light I walked through darkness, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me. And then in verse 18. Then I said, I shall die in my nest, and I shall multiply my days as the sand. I, uh, I want to preach tonight for a little while. I, if I'm not going to preach, maybe I'll just talk. I won't try not to keep you long, but... If you're going to hell, you don't need to go early. And if you're going to heaven, it don't matter what time you get there. I want to preach what I think and I really believe that God gave me for this conference. I want to preach on the subject, Disturbed into your destiny oh man because every speaker has spoken to us and the whole thing even I had written down brother uh, Morton Bustard I had one written down for him he said I feel in the spirit that the word of the spirit is launch I heard brother Billy Hale this morning magnificently oh. said God is attracted and drawn to weakness so you need two things, feet of clay and wings of an eagle. Yeah. And I, and I want to I talk to you for a while on this, about disturbed into your destiny. Okay. Father, bless the ministry of the Word. Help me to preach real good. And I know folks are tired and they're kind of, it's been a long day and it's been a fabulous conference. And I know that sometimes we can uh, get emotional explosions and overloads, but Lord... I, I, I just, I'm very comfortable with being your kid, and I'm real happy you're my dad. And uh, I'm not here to prove anything to anybody. I just, I just want to be a blessing to your folks and say a few things before we go home. Bless these sweet people and energize their hearts and minds for a few more moments. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. The most needful thing in our life can also be the nastiest to your future. He said, as an eagle stirreth up his nest. Now the nest is needful. It's a good place to be born in. It's a nice place to live. And it's a great place to leave. I read the Webster's Dictionary and he said, a nest is a structure made or chosen by birds, turtles, hornets, fish, for the spawning and the raising of their young. But then he said a little statement after that. He said, nest, a cozy, snug place to live in and retreat to. I'm going to try it again. I felt like the Holy Ghost told me, challenge the Pentecostal movement to get out of their nest. Because there's a great blessing in a busted up nest. I did a study on eagles and eaglets and uh, if you disagree with me, fine. I got the mic. And, and I read this book called The uh, Christian Eagle and they did quite a, an analytic study on the eagle and the eaglet. And in that Deuteronomy 32, apparently Moses had seen how 
uh, the eagles train their young, how they come up and they flutter around and they expand their wings and they show them a picture of what they want done. But in this gentleman's book, he said it, it really doesn't work that way. He spent a lifetime studying eagles. He said, first thing about an eagle is that the female picks her husband. And here's how she picks him. When he comes around just kind of calling, flirting around, wanting a date, she looks at him and, and according to his story, she picks up a twig or a, a big log or a stone and she picks it up and she flies into the air. He takes off after her and when she gets high enough for the first courtship test, she just dumps it. He dives because eagles can go 200 miles an hour straight down. He dives down and catches the stick. And brings it, puts it on the ground. The chick that's trying to get a romance going, she says, not bad for a starter. And she picks up a larger log, a heavier rock. The writer said she has been known to pick up something that weighs as much as she does. And she'll ascend up to 5,000 feet. And he just chases after her. And when she gets ready for the next test, she just dumps it. She dumps it, down goes Flash. And he catches it. And I said, now what in the world's all that about? And then as he explained this tremendous story, he said, because what happens is, if they fall in love and have these little boobalas and these little bambinos... Mom and Dad are both involved with the training of the eaglets. Here's what happens. Mama comes and disturbs the nest, takes it apart and throws them over the cliff. Daddy's got to catch them. Oh, you ain't hearing me yet. You got a daddy that is watching who you, when you get ready to fall over the cliff. And you got to have some courage tonight that you may be flapping and falling, but He will not drop you. He will not let you be destroyed just because He messes up your nest. I feel like preaching. I felt in the Holy Ghost. You can correct me later and tell me I'm a ding -a ling Fine. Not now, later. That I felt like we was going to blow and go and this is one of the greatest meetings we've ever had. But God wanted to challenge the... I don't want to hurt your feelings. The United Pentecostal Church as a constituency. And say, alright, here's your problem. You got a nesting syndrome. Because the nest is the place that you build for your security in case God doesn't come through. And God has told us in this conference through eight or ten speakers, I want you to get out. Launch out. Go further. Get out of Jerusalem. You want the supernatural? Then let me bust up your nest and let me teach you how to fly. Be, be seated here. We got to run. We got to run. We got to run. This is powerful. The thing that appears to be the most cruel becomes the most beneficial. Oh, I was praying in the hotel, talking in tongues like a Chinese laundry, walking all over my room. Man, I felt the Holy Ghost. I was talking and crying, and God just spoke in my spirit. Now, I don't know how He speaks to you, but He just spoke in my spirit and said, My people are suffering from one bad problem. They have folded wings. And until the eagle mama starts destroying and disturbing the nest, they will never tap into their potential. Tell my people they are pregnant with promise. They are pregnant with potential. And I'm going to stir up a mess in their lives so that they open up and catch the wind. We can't just be another church on the block. 
We can't just dress funny and look funny. We've got to be able to mount up with wings as eagles. Oh, glory. Can I preach a little bit here? Hey, 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 hey. Woo! Hear what the Spirit is saying to us. I'm not happy you're just born. You were not born to die in your nest. You were born to fly from your nest. The Spirit spoke to my heart. There are ministries sitting here right now that you have folded your wings and said it's your sunset years. The devil is a liar. You've got stuff inside of you you need to share with the rest of the body. I don't care if you've been mistreated, lied on, kicked out of your church. I don't care if you're a political casualty. You've got stuff inside of you and God's going to want an answer. What are you doing sitting in your nasty little nest with your wings folded? There's a whole bunch of us eaglets with like an example on how to move in the heavenlies. How to fly. How to ascend high. We are given a heavenly calling. Not an earthly calling. A heavenly calling. We've got to have somebody show us how to catch the wind. You, you, you can be seated. I wish to God I didn't have this titanium hip. If I had your hip, I wouldn't sit on my rear end and do nothing. I'm going to tell you something. Some of you cats that play statue, watch out. The pigeons are looking for you. You know why you're playing statue? You don't have any idea. You've got wings that can lift you above the storm. You've got wings that can lift you above birds of prey. You've got wings that can take you into the Spirit. But you won't try your wings as long as your nest is nifty. I'm going to preach. I'm not here to correct nobody. I'm just slob doing my job. Stay with me just a minute. Just, just hold on. In this guy's analytic overview of eagles, he said two amazing visits take place. The first visit, Mama Eagle comes in. Their, their, their uh, nests can go between 6 and 10 foot wide. It can weigh up to 2 tons with all the stuff that he, that the, he and she brings up to fix that thing. But there comes a day when she comes to the nest and the kids get freaked out because Mama looks like she's on cocaine. She's got a wild look in her eye. She ain't acting right. And she starts throwing stuff out of the nest. The down, the feathers, the soft stuff. And, but she doesn't dismantle the nest. The first visit is it is to make them uncomfortable and the guy says in the book here's why because they have two gifts and they know nothing about either one talons and wings so he says mama wants to teach them how to use their talons first because they need to learn how to stand and when they throw the junk out of the nest they grab a hold of the sticks and the and the lumber that's up there so they can learn how to stand you not hear me we've raised a generation of Pentecost that wants to fly but doesn't know how to stand. We need to learn how to stand so that when you fly, you'll come back and you'll be moral and you'll be pure and you'll tell the truth and you'll be honest. We don't need any more gymnastics for Jesus. We need some people that can stand. There's not a, you sit down, they, 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 what are you jumping up for? Sit down. The, there's not a doubt in my mind that all these years that God has worked with us, holy roll the apostolic folks, that God has been teaching us to learn how to stand. Oh yes, but now the Spirit is saying, okay, you're standing, you've stood for my name, you stood for the truth, you stood for modesty and morality, good, I appreciate it, that's good. Now, I'm going to teach you how to fly.
I'm going to take you beyond the parameter of your latest limitation. I'm going to show you what those folded things are for. Sister, sister, sit down, sit down. Whew. Happens suddenly. All of a sudden, Mama comes that day. She's had a bad hair day. Something happens. She just shows up. She just starts throwing the sticks everywhere. She's throwing the logs out. She's throwing everything. The chickies are running, man. And you know what the guy said? While Mama's doing that, Daddy's circling. And the little eaglets are saying... <laughs> Mom's lost it. I'm going to tell you something. If you're in a church that's just a bunch of nesters, get out of that mess because you're supposed to fly. That's what the Holy Ghost has been doing in this conference, challenging us to open up those things that are folded. Oh, I know you look kind of dumb. I know you look kind of... Oh. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Look, look, come on, let, let's learn something tonight, okay? You've had all the greatest preaching. I, I can't match any of this stuff. In fact, I'm not in competition with these guys. Oh, pardon me, let me help you with that. You know where that damnable competition spirit comes from? Holy rollers sitting in the nest too long. Yeah, Brother Merle, we stay in the nest long enough, we won't count the lost souls, we'll count members and money. God, through this conference, is trying to open our eyes to tell us I'm fixing to throw this whole movement into scary situations that you can't fix. I'm going to make you depend on me. Uh, and, poor little, and poor little Eaglet's saying, Mom's flipped out, man. She's lost it. She's freaked out. She's had well, something wrong with her. And she just spreads everything, and then she just throws them over. Now, now, now just bear with me, because I'm, I'm not a great eagle. I, I'm, I'm, I'm partial eaglet and partial ignorant. <laughs> but, but I'm learning. I've been praying for 25 years to be used of the Lord and the gifts of the Spirit. It hasn't happened yet, but in this conference, God said, Now. Listen, I've got to help somebody right now because when we go home and we try to use our wings, we're going to look as dumb and ignorant and foolish and stupid as those flopping eaglets. Because when she throws them over the nest, they're doing this. Don't let the critics sitting in their nest shut you down. Better to fail trying to fly than to sit in a nest and die. I wish I could get a witness in the house. I know it would make you feel kind of ignorant, but if I could just get a few friendly folks, would you do this? Now, 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 ready? Unfold. That's what Brother Hopkins was talking about. Catch the drift of the wind. Catch. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit, saith the Lord. You just try to use your wings and the drift of the spirit will lift you. The eagle is one of the few birds in all the world that does not flap. Chickens flap. Buzzards flap. Not eagles. Go ahead. Eagles just go, oh, yes. Yeah. 
Because what? The Bible said, the eagle stirreth up her nest, watch, and fluttereth over them. You know what she does? She gives them an example how to do it. And they said, what is mom up to? She's... She says, because I don't want you to be like a barnyard buzzard going, flapper, 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 flapper. She said, stand on the edge. Now sense the wind. You'll pick it in a minute and it'll come by you. And when you do, just kind of go out on it like a surfboard. When that eagle catches that wind, you know what he does? He ascends in a circle. And every time he goes in a circle, the circle gets, oh, gets bigger. The Holy Ghost told me, if I can get some of my people to start catching the wind, their circle of influence will get bigger than they've ever had. Let me, let me try it again. You've got to be disturbed to get into your destiny. You can't just sit and stare. God bless me and my four no more. Oh, I'm going to get nasty. Now, now I got it written right here. You can, you can validate it right here. In the bagel barn, I wrote this five weeks ago. You cannot learn to fly sitting on someone's pew. No, you didn't hear me. Next point. And you cannot learn to fly riding on your favorite preacher's ministry. Where, where, where's all the headquarters dudes? Brother Lehman, you ready? I got it five weeks ago. Didn't know you was going to be here, but you need this. And you cannot learn to fly through an organizational structure. I didn't say structure's wrong. Structure just doesn't have anything to do with flying. Now, now I got the last one for this guy right here five weeks ago. And you can't learn how to fly by going to Because of the Times. You're not, you're not hearing me. What happens is we're like a bunch of junkies. We're a bunch of holiness hobos. We just ride in on everybody else's prayer life. Kill here, talking tongues, joke, boo, hey, hey, ha. Go back, guess what you do? Get right back in your nest. I'm telling you, I think I have a spirit of prophecy on me. God is fixing to go to where we are. He's fixing to dismantle the nest. Not to destroy us, but to develop the potential that's in us. I'm going I'm to I'm preach a little longer. Just, just be seated, please. Exodus 19 to 4 said, When the Lord caught Israel out of Egypt's bondage, He said, I bear you on eagles' wings. That's fine. That's when you first get saved. You don't know beans. You're dead and trespass. You couldn't fly anyway. You're dead as a hamburger. But once He brings you out, now He's going to teach you how to do it. Some of us are so afraid to pray for people or to speak a word of faith. Because I prayed for lots of folks and they died. What do you do? I keep praying. I prayed for lots of folks that didn't get the Holy Ghost. That don't stop me from praying for folks to get the Holy Ghost. I can't give nobody the Holy Ghost. I couldn't heal nobody of a headache on my best day. But God, who is rich in mercy, if I can tap into what Brother Hopkins was saying, if I, hey, 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 if I can grope after deity and get into that realm, I can become what God designed me to be. And He did not design us to sit on a padded pew. He designed us to go higher than the rest of the birds. I don't mean to be rude, but we got to cut it out from this conference. Too much flapping going on. You know what flapping does? Draws attention to yourself. I'm going to talk a little while. Sit down just a minute. I'm 
Job 29, 18. God, have mercy. Job 29, 18. The Bible says, Job was crying out in that first two verses. I wish I was like in the days of old. That's the curse in Pentecost. I wish things just wouldn't change. Oh, get a life. Let me tell you something, Jack. If what we're doing ain't working, it ain't that holy. Get rid of it. You can't get rid of the message. There is but one message. But you can't adjust your methods. You, you can change your approach. Hey, hey. I'm sorry. Job says, I wish I was in my past when things were nifty and deed in my tent and I walked in butter and people obeyed my counsel and my kids were around me and the candle of the Lord shined on my tent. It was just kind of nifty. <laughs> and then Job made the dumbest mistake because he said out loud, well, I got flocks and sheep and gold and silver and kids and stuff. Uh... Got a nice nest here. Uh, I think I'll just die in my nest. And God said, What? Do you think I blessed you so you could be an ignorant jerk and die in your nest? I didn't bless you so you could die in your nest. In fact, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to mess your nest up. I'm going to let your kids die. I'm going to let your health go away. I'm going to give a disaster to your home. Why? Not to destroy you so that you can have a new encounter with me. So you can lift yourself into a higher plateau. So instead of just believing in me, you can see me face to face. Am I making sense yet? A few more minutes. Watch this. Job was a great man. He had it all together. He was such a neat dude. Heaven and hell both took notice of him. Let me ask you, when's the last time hell took notice of you? What kind of Bible could we preach from if it was our story? Now you're not hearing me. Do you realize that for thousands of years the human race has been blessed, inspired, and encouraged because God decided one day to just bust wide open Job's nest? And what he went through and the declarations he said and the things that are written about him and the experiences he's had have strengthened millions of human beings around the world. Just think if you'll let God bust up your nice little secure nest, who could you touch? Who could you affect? Who... Who could be moved by the demeanor of your Christian character? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though I lose everything, I will not lose my faith in God. You know what God was trying to do? He was trying to get Job out of his nest so he could go higher. I, I'm sorry, Elder. I'm not taking advantage of you. I need to talk to you for a minute, please. Listen carefully. I'm going to mess with you. It is possible for you and I as a movement to practice holiness, and we ought to. We'll go to hell without it. And yet practice holiness to such a degree we never act in faith. Some of you sweet darlings have got your skirt adhesive taped to your ankle and you got it locked jawed around your neck. You got sleeves so far you can't even eat your groceries. That's your bag? Fine, do it, pal. When's the last time you took a chance? <laughs> you, you know. Don't you know what holiness is? Holiness is no more or less than your personal discipline. Holiness is what you do for God. I try to live holy and be righteous and moral and pure and clean. Not so I can be saved, but because I am saved. And I want to please my daddy. I'm not doing some kind of standard of holiness so they'll let me sing in the choir. I want to sing in that choir. I want to be a part of that party. I want to go to that city. And 
go as fast as I can. Please bear with me. Is it possible that you and I have so given ourselves to quote holiness, whatever that is, and we're totally afraid of change, challenge, or risk? So you got lots of people in your church that are holy, got about as much faith as a dead frog. Won't try nothing new. Won't step out. I'm getting there. Hold on. Need a driver's license for your tongue? Got a nasty attitude, nasty spirit. Hair's piled so high you got to bend down to get in. The only thing close to your hairdo is your nose. I'm going to try it again. God wants you to unfold your wings and stop all this trivial foolishness and mount up into the heavenlies so that we can do what God designed us to do. Please, please be seated. I'm going as fast as I can. Nests are what we build for security. The problem with our nests, they have a power to stop our worship. That's why we've got stacks of folks in our church at home that are as dead as a hammer. Put their tithe in, throw a few bucks in, would never be immoral, dishonest. They just sit there. What are they doing? They're enjoying their nest. I'm telling you what I feel in my spirit. God is warning us tonight. Listen, if you do not get out of your nest, I'm fixing to come by your nest and I'm going to dismantle it and disrupt it and dislodge it because you becoming what I want you to be is more important to me than your comfort. When you have a great sense of safety and security, it can rob you of praise and rejoicing. Why? Who needs God? Because the only time you're going to praise is when you have a spirit of humility. The only people that praise and worship are those that realize there's somebody bigger than them that could help them. That's why I wouldn't sit next to a non-worshipper and a praiser if they paid me. I, no, and you just sit there all you want to. I would not sit next to some nincompoop that just sits there and critiques everybody. And No, not God's on the prowl. He's looking for them that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. God is on the prowl. He wants to find somebody that wants to be better than they are. And you can't be better than you are as long as you stay safe in your nest. I'm not the judge here. This conference spiritual temperature is a witness from God that God is trying to move this movement out of its self-indulging security. Best thing to help you get to heaven is a bunch of hell. Say, so, oh, Brother Arnold, I wish we had miracles. Well, just get a bunch of hell in your life and stuff you can't fix. And that's the platform for miracles. The reason why God doesn't show up more than He wants to is because we're our Savior. I'm sorry. You're doing good. I know that. But I'm leaving tomorrow. Just hold on. We, 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 we have our little safety zones. You ever notice the people in your home church always sit in the same seats? You want to know why? Nothing happens. I sit there because nothing happens. I'm not sitting next to them crazy new converts. They might knock my wig off, dance on my blue suede shoes. We need to start putting up placards in our church. 
Danger zone. Danger zone. Danger zone. There's folks with wings here. If you don't want to get slapped upside the head, you better go sit in the bathroom somewhere. Because we're fixing to go for a ride, Clyde. Oh, I wish I could get you to understand. If you could just learn how to be sensitive to the Spirit, you could catch the updrift of the wind. A uh, few, few more minutes. I'm almost there. Jeez. You've got to become vulnerable if you're ever going to be an effective worshiper. And that's the problem with a security nest. You're never vulnerable. So God just strips the nest away and says, Now you're vulnerable. Which means now you need me, Flash. I don't know about you, but... Man, I, sometimes God taking my nest apart, I, I feel like I'm going to be in a Playboy magazine or something. I, I, I ain't got no clothes on. I'm naked. I'm scared half to death. And, Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. You've got your nest. See, you keep your nest because you want to make sure that your image is up there. I'm trying to be conformed to His image. I don't give a flip about my image. I don't even give a flip about this movement's opinion. The only opinion I'm interested in is J-E-S-U-S. The highest thing you can ever do in your life is to please God. Please be seated. Let me try it again. Praise and worship requires a humility of the soul. Problems allow us to praise someone greater than us. If you do not have any problems, you praise yourself. Ain't that right, Nebuchadnezzar? Is this not this great Babylon that I built? By my wisdom, my power, my coolness. And a voice came from heaven and said, What? You said, What? You built this by yourself? And God stepped down in one night and said, You're not hearing me. He come down and start dismantling Nebuchadnezzar's nest. Not to destroy him, but to bless him. And to give him a greater vision of God. If God would do that for heathen, what will he do for his children who are in covenant? Don't you think he loves us more who are in covenant than the pagans? Sit down just a minute please, sir, ma'am. Whoever you are. God, you better hurry up because I got nowhere to go. I waited for all you. I've listened to 200 preachers, 5,000 songs, 200 offerings. I'm bankrupt leaving this place. I ain't in a hurry. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. When I think where he brought me from. You know what I'm fixing to tell you? God, if you'll bless me, I'll praise you. If you'll bless me, I'll worship you. If you bless me and bring me out, I won't sit there like an ignorant slob. Every one of these precious anointed women and men that have spoken to us have had the theme of the Holy Ghost. Break out. Launch out. Get out. It's time to fly. It's a devil spirit that says, well, let me just sit in my nest and wait till I die. God says, you think I've wasted my precious redemption on a bunch of dummies so you can just sit there and just stroke yourself and preen your feathers and tell everybody else what a bunch of ninnies they are and how great you are sitting on your duff in your nest? God says, you better, you better get that nest taken apart. If you don't, I'll take it apart for you. 
I'm telling you, this is fixing to come a, a great crash into the United Pentecostal Church. Now, I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm just telling you what I know in the Spirit. God is fixing to bring some stuff against us that we ain't going to be able to fix with an offering or a hallelujah. Because God's going to take... Because God wants to dismantle and disrupt our nests so we'll learn how to move in the Spirit. Oh, I just lost about 80% of you. Oh, you mean God's going to send me trouble? You better thank God He thinks you're worthy of trouble. Because trouble's not going to kill you. Trouble's going to bless you. Trouble's going to develop you. Problems are the platform where power is born in us. Please be seated. I'm going as fast as I can. What time is it? 20 to 10. Okay. Let's just, I'll, just, I'll just cut this thing all apart here. I'm here to tell you, according to, according to Hebrews 12, God can shake every nest that can be shaken. He said, I can shake every relationship. I can shake every ministry. Don't you think because you carry a card, God's impressed. Let me help you, Flash. Don't you ever be dumb enough to think God's an American. He ain't never been an American. He don't rule this thing by democracy. You can't impeach him or throw him out. He was here before you got here. He'll be here after America's a whisper. No, you're not hearing me. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm trying to help you understand. God doesn't owe us anything. We owe God everything. Oh, I wish I could do it. I know you're hurting, Brother Dross. But we prayed for you. And, and I know that's maybe just a little bit. But I'm going to tell you what. I was praying for you in the motel. Talking in tongues and crying. In my mind. Well, I know God's emptied your nest of somebody you love very much. Guess what? It's not so you can be filled with sorrow and devastation. And lose your ministry. God's fixing to take you to a plateau you've never been to before. God will take stuff out of our nest. So that we can fly higher. We can become something we never were before. It's not beyond God for us to lose people, lose money, lose reputation for us to soar. Am I boring you guys? Uh, as fast as I can. Just... Why don't someone just yell at me? Oh God! Won't you bust up my nest so I can fly? Bust up my nest so I learn how to depend on you. Bust up my nest so it's not my money and my 401k and my retirement and my investment. Bust up my nest. Oh boy. When this, when this precious man was trying to take up that missionary offering, I don't know whether there's any Christian curse words, but I was close. <laughs> we got 4,000 people sitting in here. We got enough money in here, we could buy Ethiopia. Standing up here saying, who give me $50? Who, who take a few missionaries? You're in your nest. You know, you got to be careful now. You got to watch out. You know, you got to give that money away you know we print paper God makes gold what's your problem you ever seen a, a funeral hearse pull in a U-Haul stand up there and Fabulous man of God, I try to make the man beg. <laughs> Spend more on a hunting trip and a fishing trip to Alaska and a bunch of shotguns and bass boats. Tell you what, God's fixing to pick up your bass boat and send it sailing. Don't walk out of here and say, Brother Arnold's against fishing. I'm not against fishing or hunting. I am against misplaced priorities. Remember, if your nest is blessed, 
You got everything from God anyway. God gave it to you. He doesn't care how much you have as long as what you have doesn't have you. Okay, we only got a few minutes and I got a lot more to say and I'm not going to go there. Just, just, just. I'm talking about being disturbed into your destiny. I'm talking about David getting discouraged and saying stuff like, one day I'll surely perish at the hand of Saul. That bum couldn't kill you if he had an atomic bomb. You killed this nine and a half foot slob with a sling and a rag and a rock. And now you're worrying about this backslidden preacher. Why, why do you worry about critics anyway? You want to get encouraged? Listen to your critic. When they criticize you, it means they're afraid of you. Mm, well, I better leave that one alone. So what does David do? He says, well, you know, being a, you can't trust God. I'll become my own savior. And I'll take me and my nest down to Ziglag and I'll build me a little condo down here. Because I can't trust God to protect me. He only anointed me and told me I'd be the next king. But you know how God, he, you know, he just, he's got Alzheimer's, can't remember where I am. He's got dementia. And God watches his little kid run down to Ziglag with his nest. Well, I'm safe here. And while he's out on one of his lying forays, God came by with a cigarette lighter <laughs> and burned that dude to the ground. And when he came back, he said, I'm Gawa. Everything's gone. Everything's gone. My wife's gone. My kids are gone. What am I going to do? And God said, spread your wings. Spread your wings. How? Come seek me. Shall I pursue? Pursue. Shall I overtake? You'll overtake. Shall I recover? You'll recover all. Come on, unfold your wings, David. Am I making sense yet? Study your Bible, all you great theologians. Write me a letter, send me an email. I have yet to be able to find the 16 months that David stayed in Ziglag. He never wrote a psalm. Because when you fall in love with your nest, the music stops. <laughs> Man, I wish... <laughs> I have a sick mind. I need therapy. I, I, I was in my mind imagining in the hotel that while I preached this and put my arms out, God had just let me float. It would freak you out, wouldn't it? That man really walks with God. You ready to read, Red? We've got to hurry up. We've only got a few minutes. I'm just, I'm just going to shut this whole thing down. This father of the faithful thing, you know that Abraham guy? You know how he started all that? God met him in the earth, the Chaldees, worshiping in front of an idol. And he said, get thee out of the earth, Chaldees. I want you to leave your nest. I'm going to make you something. Now when God found us, he found us in all kinds of nasty nests. He brought us out. And now all of a sudden, since we've been out, we're building our own. Oh, it got quiet. Read for me, Rev. 28 of Genesis, verse 10. I'll try to finish. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. He left the nest because all kinds of chaos broke out between him and Esau. He cheated his brother out of his birthright. He lied to his father. He's a nice guy. <laughs> oh, I loved your message. Where are you, brother? Hey, I loved it. Man, because God's fixing it. He looks at Esau and looks at Jacob. He says, I like the liar. I think I'm going to go on a contract with the liar. 
He's got some cool moves. I like him. And Jacob is running out of his nest. Now, that ain't a good way to leave home, but... And the Bible says that God busted up that nest. Why? Because the nest was not his destiny. Sometimes God's got to bring you out of something or you'll never discover your destiny. I'm almost finished. Re 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 read for me. Re and he yeah. lighted upon a certain place. A certain place. And carried there all night. Yeah. Because the sun was set. Yeah. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows. Oh. And lay down in that place to I sleep. I wish I had an hour. I'd like to ask you, what are you putting your head resting on? 401k? Wall Street? Investment? Stocks? Bonds? Securities? Retirement plan? I know you're here somewhere, Costa. I'm not against you. But let me help you with this, Flash. You keep putting your head on all that ignorant stuff, the heavens never will open up to you. Now, you're not hearing me. Baba said he laid his head on the stone or the rock. If you put your head on the rock, it'll give you a revelation. Some of us preachers, you hear me? You need to get out of business. Stop selling stuff on the side. Stop being in real estate. Get out of Amway. Let God pay. God's got a bigger checkbook. If you're supposed to be a minister, trust God. Trust God. And let God save you instead of giving yourself credit. Read, 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 read for me, Rev. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up ladder. on the earth, yeah. and the top of it reached to heaven. He never saw that vision while he stayed in his nest, Brother Tom. Never. Because family can mess up your brains. I'm so happy what you said, Elder. Where are you, Elder? Keys, that was so great. Run, away with a, run around with a bunch of nincompoops and critical people. Stupid idiots. Not in the coldest day in hell. I'll tell you one thing. If you don't remember nothing else, remember this. Let the devil go to hell by himself. I'm not going to sit there next to some idiot damning this, condemning that, criticizing this, running this down, running that down. I'm going to tell you something. Friend, if God hadn't showed mercy to us, we wouldn't even be here. You're right. If God hadn't reached out into our lives, we wouldn't even be here. Now, all of a sudden, we're spectators and criticizers. God, break these nests apart. Because once you bound up, you can't take trash with you. I'm, I'm almost done. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's five minutes to ten. We'll go ten o'clock. Ten o'clock, okay. Ten o'clock, okay. Re re read for me, Rev. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Yeah. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, yeah. and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. Let me help you with this right now. We've had a lot of prophecies in this conference, a lot of promises from God, a lot of tingly sensations. I'm all for it. But let me give you the real proof of something. Whether you've actually got a word from God or not. Here's how you can tell. It won't make no sense. It's totally impossible. And you know you can't do it. If that happens, you got a word from God. There you go. You better stop checking your bank account. You better stop checking your calculator. You, if you can do it, God didn't tell you. If you can't do it, God told you. No, I'm almost done. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to mess up your night. Come on. Come on, come on, Reverend Jack. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, yeah. and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. See, God will tell you stuff you don't possess. Because he's always talking from his viewpoint. I own it all. Here, kid, you can have it. Mm -hmm. And we're always fussing and arguing and saying, now how's it going to work? Uh, it's my business. Here you are. Here's your stuff. Uh, don't you get it? It was like Jacob going out and sleeping in a pup tent, and when God told him, he says, how do you like sleeping in this Radisson? Radisson. He said, wherever you're laying down, that's your stuff. 
Yeah. Listen to me. Until you get your head put in the right place, you'll have no idea what God's got stacked up for you on the other side. Mm -hmm. You cannot fight the gate of hell if you don't discover how to get through the gate of heaven. You can't just study a bunch of stuff and go to Bible school and come out gigantic. It won't work that way. You've got to learn how to get through the gate of heaven. That's what he said. He said, this is the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Why? Because if you learn how to get through the gate, God will show you what he's got ready for you to, to bring back to this planet to make his purpose accomplished. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You, I can tell you're worn out. I'm so sorry. No, sir. Re re read for me, Rev. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I want you to go over Genesis 31, if you would. Now watch carefully. It is imperative you know where you lay your head. He laid his head on the rock, and it gave him a revelation from heaven. John laid his head on the bosom of Jesus. We got 22 chapters of the book of Revelation. Samson laid his head in some chick's lap and he got a crew cut and got thrown in jail. Now you're not hearing me. I don't care what your position is on TV and video and all that foolishness. You better be careful where you're putting your head. You need to stop asking all your buddies, well, what do you think? Well, what do you think? What do you think I ought to do? Why don't you just shut off the TV, turn down the radio, pull down the blinds, put your face in the carpet, and ask what God thinks. Yeah. You okay? Just a few minutes and we'll quit. I'm sorry. Haven't done very well with this, but you've got to understand something. God took him out of his nest, gave him a revelation of the future. He leaves there, and what does he do? Because us humans are the same way. We build nests. And so he goes over to Laban's house, and that guy couldn't tell the truth stand on the Bible looking at Jesus. So now you got two crooks on the same farm. And the Bible says, Brother Dees, he spent 20 years at Laban's house building his nest. Having wives and kids and family and insurance policies and 401ks and you cannot find one time in 20 years in 20 years that Jacob ever prayed and it didn't hurt God a bit because his destiny far surpasses his disastrous behavior now we have a hard time with that in Pentecost because we're behavior people we're performance-oriented people. And if, and if we don't live up to what we thought, oh, oh, God, God write you off. Not hardly, pal. The Bible said that if God's righteous people fall, they shall not utterly be cast down. For the hand of the Lord upholdeth. You don't really think that God just started dealing with you when you came to church. He was dealing with some of us when we were sitting in a movie theater, when we were sitting on a bar stool, when we was in a hunky tonk somewhere. God had an angel sitting next to us. You didn't come here just because you decided to join church. God put a thought in your heart. He put a thought in your head. And that's why you went to church. That ought to deliver us from arrogance and pride and ego and all that stupid stuff. I'm almost done, Anthony. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm just nervous here because I, I know it's late and everybody's got to go. I, I, I'm just, just, just watch this. Twenty years later, he builds his nest. Read for me, Reverend Jacob. And the Lord said unto Jacob, he knew right, wait, into Wait a minute. He knew right where he was. He knew how much money he had, how many investments he had, how many sheep and donkeys and all the rest he had. Now watch what he says. And the Lord said unto Jacob, what? Return unto the land of thy fathers. Get out of your nest. And go back to the place that you made a promise to me. Mm -hmm. Read. And unto thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And, and I will be with you. Because your destiny is beyond what you've become or what you've acquired. According to the description, I have to run fast now. God is saying... Leave the nest and go where I tell you. And don't worry about old ignorant Laban. He ain't going to like it. 
Listen to me. When you leave this conference and you make it up in your heart and mind that you're going to bust out of this nest, don't expect your relatives to be thrilled or your friends sitting on the pew to be happy about you. Because Laban was ticked off that Jacob left and chased him. But watch. When you make a decision to leave the nest, the next thing that happens is the supernatural starts operating. And God talked to Laban before he ever found Jacob. You want the supernatural to move in your life? Make it up in your mind. I'm getting out of my nest. And God will fight you. Oh, thank you, Tom. Pardon me. Me and Tom are going for a cruise. All you squatters, you just squat a while. Come on, Tom. I'm not worried about Laban's opinion. Oh, feel a big one coming. Oh, I'm so glad he got me out of my nest. I would have never known what these wings were for. I can see so much better way up here. Can I have three minutes? Five. Five minutes. Watch this. Watch this. Even when God tells you personally, leave the nest, you can be very afraid. And Jacob was afraid to leave, even though God told him to leave. So he sneaks out. While Laban's not looking. And he's hoofing it. And Laban finds out three days later that the punk is gone. And he chases him for seven days. And just about time he gets to the camp, this turns my motor on, brother Jack Cunningham. Just about time he gets there, God steps down and says, Listen, punk, don't talk to my boy, bad or good. I'll kill you. Why? Because I told him to get out of the nest and he's on a flight. Yeah. He's filed a flight plan with me and I told him to fly back to Bethel. And Laban just, uh, 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 the God of your fathers met me the other night. See, we, we Pentecostals ain't the only people God can talk to. Yeah. He keeps going. He's on his way back. Chapter 32, verse 1, I think it is, Rev. Come here. Come on, hurry up. 32. It's Old Testament. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. Stop! What did I just tell you? The minute you decide to leave the nest, God will release the supernatural. And here comes two companies of angels called Mahanam. And Mahanam means two companies. What is it saying? When you get ready to leave your nest, God will put one company of angels to take care of your past, and another company of angels to take care of your future. Just move on. You ready, Tom? Don't worry about all these sparrows. Trying to be finished. And this is what I got it right here. You can check my notes after the service. Not now. The service. It's right here. I'll show it to you. When I was in that restaurant eating that bagel, that cup of tea, Holy Ghost spoke to me. Said, my people do not want to leave their nests lest they be forced to deal with brethren that are offended. I'm going to try it one more time. Because if you stay in your nest and if I stay in mine, I can have unsettled issues with brethren that are offended at me. And I can just look at it and say, hook you, man. I got my little kingdom. I got my nest. You got an attitude, tough break. But the book said, if your brother have ought against you, get out of your nest. And go settle the dispute. Say, well, 
He left us. Big deal. You think us is everything? Boy, it's getting so weak in here. I feel like I'm in a different denomination. That's why what you said the other day was so powerful. It made me slobber and snot and cry half the night. When you talked about people that are in a city and won't even talk to some guy across the town, across the river, down the street. You know what the problem is? The nesting syndrome. The nesting syndrome. The nesting syndrome. But buddy, if you learn how to fly, you're happy for anybody. Oh, we're going to fly, Jerry Wayne? Come on. You know why? When you take off flying, you can't bring trash. You can't bring trivia. You can't bring your hurt feelings. You gotta concentrate on flying. You gotta leave your dumb baggage on the ground. So you might as well stand with me. I'm never gonna get done. It's too late, and you've been very nice. Here's why. Here's what the Holy Ghost told me, Brother Anthony, right there, right there. He said the reason His people don't come out of the nest. It's because they don't want to be vulnerable. Because the nest, the nest provides us security. Uh -huh. yeah. I got a big church. I got money. I got stuff. Yes. You yes. Know, tough break. Die and go to hell. What do I care about you? Mm -hmm. I got my nest. Mm -hmm. I'm living good. I'm making a good living. Yeah. Well, oh, I could help you. Hook you. I don't care about helping you. I got my nest. Yeah. But then when you step out, you're kind of naked, transparent. And you walk up and say, Esau, I got, I got, man, I feel something. God is calling the Pentecostal movement, the apostolic people, to get off your sticking high horse and get out of your nest and understand that people who see things different than you are not devils. And they're not inferior believers. And we have no right to have animosity. That you can take a stand and believe what you want, live what you but to mistreat somebody. And to write them off like they're brand X and you're the premium. And you couldn't catch your breath if you were in a fast train if God decided to hold your next one. And God could let you have an aneurysm in one second. You'd be spitting all over yourself. They put you in a nursing home. And you sit here like in your arrogance. Oh, I feel like I'm about ready to plow through something here. I'm talking about God's trying to help this movement. You know what they usually say on the plane, Brother Anthony? Please buckle your seat belts. We're about to experience a little turbulence till we get to cruising altitude. Don't let the turbulence when your nest gets broke up scare you out of your flight. You're destined for the heavens. You're destined for high places. You have a heavenly calling. Brother Jack, I, I, I got one more scripture you need to... Need to re please just stand with me, please. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take advantage of you. I'm sorry. I, I, I got pages of stuff. I mean, when I eat a bagel, I eat one. Where do you want me at? So what happens when, what happens when they get out of the nest? God changes Jacob to Israel. Now, I did a little word study on that. Now, he's smarter than I am. He says I'm wrong. We'll take it up later. Much later. <laughs> but I did a word study on that thing, and I always hear people say, well, you know, he changed his name to Israel, Prince with God. That ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. It says, as a prince with God, thou hast power with God and man. That's not what the name Israel means. It's a hyphenated conjunctive word. It's two words hyphenated and then put together. Isra and El. El is God. Israel is governed by. God wants to get us out of our nest so we won't just be the United Pentecostal Church. We'll be God-governed people in attitude, in purpose, in mission, in commitment, in sacrifice.
Okay, I'm, I'm last point. And man, this was a good sermon. I wish I could have got to it. <laughs> Read for me, Rev. Oh, uh, just, you go to 35 and 1. I got one last thing. I'm sorry to keep you standing. Remember, he has the wrestling match. Then he has a reconciliation with Esau. You know what happened after that? After the supernatural, after reconciliation, the Bible says he comes down in chapter 33 and 34, uh -huh. and he settles down and buys land at Shechem. And he spread his tent and started building nests again. Guess what happened? His daughter's raped. And God spoke to my heart and said, if my people don't understand they've got to stop building nests, they're going to lose their next generation. That, Sister Mangan, that would have never happened to Dinah had they not settled down. They were called to Bethel. But they stopped at Shechem to buy some property and build a nest and get a 401k. And while they were there playing their carnal games, his daughter was molested and raped. And then his sons murder all these people in the city. And Jacob's off running for his life. Finished. I'm finished right now. Read for me, Brother Jack Cunningham. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel. See, see, God's hung up, Brother John. He's hung up. Will you stop nesting? Will you get out of your dumb nest? So Arise and go to Bethel. Read. And dwell there. And make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you. Why, why is God against our nesting, Brother Gary? Because if you stay in your nest long enough, you will tolerate stuff. Mm. Jacob knew they had gods and images and teraphims. But as long as you stay in your nest, you become very tolerant of stuff that you can't drag into God's presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And so he turns around and he says, we're going back to God who gave me a promise has kept me these 20 years even though I didn't have a prayer life and he's blessed me with a lot of stuff and he's told me to come back where I made my vow where I promised I'd put that boy that's powerful a pillow became a pillar what you're resting on could it build the house of God or will it build your bungalow in the Caribbean and he says I'm going back but I, I've noticed that my family we've been nesting so much that you got gods and you've picked up some stuff you shouldn't have and so Jacob takes the lead and says, all right, let's cut it out. I know what's in your tents. I know the stupid stuff you're playing with. Give me the stuff because we're going to go meet God. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said they gave unto... Read it for me. The Bible said they gave unto Jacob. And let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went, and they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hands. You'd be surprised what a revival of holiness and sanctification and separation and commitment you could have if the preachers would just take a stand, not be brutal, vicious, caustic, rude, unkind, just say, look, We've picked up some junk along the way. We've got to get rid of it. Let's bury it at the Oak of Shechem. Yeah. That oak is a picture of a tree. What tree? Calvary. Yeah. Yeah. Read for me, Brother Jack. And, and the, the earrings that well, were in well, their oh, ears. Oh, 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 oh. Because when you have idols... You have allegiances to those idols. And the Jews were never earring wearers. The Ishmaelites were earring wearers. And Ishmael was the child of the flesh. Isaac was the child of promise. And so he turns around and says, let's have a consecration service. And let's empty our tents. And let's bust up our nets. And whatever we've put on that we know we shouldn't put on, 
Let's get it off. And let's bury it under this oak. Listen to me. I'm closed. Watch. I'm closed. Watch. I'm closed. Because what I've tried to preach to you tonight is a nest is not a place. A nest is an attitude of acceptance that will suck everything that's good out of our lives so we just become another church on the block. I wish I had time. Brother Mike Hudspeth, my dear friend, I wish I had time. Do you know that God blessed the world through Jacob's nest being busted up when Joseph was taken? What he thought was the worst thing that could ever happen to him turned out to be his future salvation. Let's lift our hands and ask God to bust up our nests. Come on. I know we're supposed to be shouting and talking in tongues, but this is serious stuff here right now. Jesus! Jesus! Walk into my tent. Show me what I picked up that I need to let go. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Don't let me make the mistake that Job said. I shall die in my nest. The Holy Ghost is telling the Pentecostal apostolics, you should die in your nest. You should fly from your nest.